Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at a brand new Roar Vacuum. This is the Dinko D40 at 3000 Pascals of suction, 108 minutes of runtime with electronic mopping. Is this the right Roar Vacuum for you? Well, stick around and find out. Well, when I first got this Roar Vacuum, luckily I didn't need the instruction manual. The setup process was pretty straightforward. Just grab the docking station, plug it in, and there's a quick start guide with a QR code, so take your fancy smartphone camera and you can link up to the Dinko app. So there's a physical space behind the docking station to allow you to wrap the cable around, but I got lazy. Make sure you turn on the robot and the robot will boot up fairly quickly. And there's a flashing blue indicator that you know it's ready to pair up to your smartphone. As you can see, this robot does have a separate water tank. This particular tank is 300 milliliters, standard with most of these robot vacuums. Okay, so also including the boxes, you have extra filter, which is handy, and you got a mopping pad, which is washable. So very, very nice. You got two washable mopping pads included out of the box. Now you have your standard docking station. One interesting thing is there's a little cutout at the top, but sadly, there's no remote control included. You also have a power brick. You got the robot itself, and there's a sticker letting you know to make sure you turn on the robot. Now the robot itself has a single side brush, and there's three buttons to start the robot, to pause it, also to tell the robot to go back to its docking station. The D40 uses gyro-based navigation, or what they call Navi 3.0. During my testing, I felt like this row of vacuum actually did better than what I expected. Uh, it was able to navigate effectively around furniture without getting stuck. Also, was able to keep track of where it's clean and where it needs to clean, and be able to return back to its docking station in a pretty efficient manner. So I tested a bunch of these row of vacuums on my channel and the Roblox E5 which is a competitor is very similar to the navigation of the D40 which uses gyro based navigation. But during my testing the row of vacuum did get stuck a couple times but it was able to pick up where it left off and was able to keep track of exactly where its dock station was. So you can see that the pattern is very similar to a lot of the ladder based robots where it uses an S pattern. Now, when I test these raw vacuums, I think the best way to test them is just to let them run loose in my home and just kind of talk about how it performed in my actual home. Now, to talk about my home, I have about 2,500 square feet. It's a mixture of hardwood floors and some media profile carpeting. Also, I have different types of furniture. As you can see, I have bar stools, also some area rugs with some dark colored patterns. So this kind of tests the maneuverability of the robot and also if the robot vacuum gets hung up on those styles. Now let's go and tell the robot vacuum to go back to its docking station. So the benefit of having a camera based system or a lotto system is it's able to position itself within a room if it gets moved or if it gets confused. Luckily with the D40 despite not having those sensors it was able to do a pretty good job estimating where it's at within a room. Now this simple test was just a mixture of hardwood floors and some medium profile carpeting and I do vacuum this area regularly about maybe two or three times a week. So you can see even though I regularly vacuum it still was able to pick up some dirt and debris. Okay let's see how well it navigates various obstacles. Now I did keep this challenge fairly simple so it's not too complex. My other challenges I usually add power cables, maybe a bathroom scale and some shoe strings. But since this world vacuum does not have a front facing camera and it can't actively avoid these obstacles I kind of wanted to make it more fair of a challenge. Now, I do recommend picking up the area as much as possible so the world vacuum can have the best chance of reaching all the areas to clean. Okay, as you can see, the world vacuum did a pretty good job going around the light obstacles, just kind of basically pushes them around a little bit, but doesn't move them too much. And for large obstacles, just kind of goes around with a side sweeper and was able to gather most of the debris. Now, in terms of the debris, I just put some raisins down and it picked up probably 95% of the raisins I put down on my ground.
So let's take a look at the map here. Nothing too crazy, but it does offer live map tracking. All right, let's go and uh, toss these road mats and we'll look at the mopping performance. Now, the first time I threw the road mat, kind of hit my camera, but the second time is a charm. Let's go and uh, set up everything and we are going to use the included boundary strips. One thing to mention is a little bit short. Uh, I kind of wish they were a little bit longer, but you do get two out of the box. All right, we'll swap out the dust tank with that 300 milliliter water tank. Make sure you pre-wet the mopping pad just so it can start uh, mopping right away. Let's take a look at the application where I just roll a vacuum screen in my house so I can kill two birds with one stone. Alright, so you can see that right now it's currently snowing and it's about 23 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's definitely cold, so it's a perfect time to do this video. Alright, down below we have some smart scenarios. So, for example, let's say we want the Rua vacuum to uh, go out when it's minus 40 degrees out. Well, that's not a problem. Very cool. Hopefully it never gets down that cold. Also, if you feel like shopping, well, they have you covered. You can go to the mall application and you can buy a new Rua vacuum or get some new accessories. How about a new stick vacuum as well, so you can have two vacuum cleaners. Alright, in the me icon, you can uh, see my personal information and you can set up your virtual assistant. Very cool. Now let's go and go into the actual robot itself. As you can see the interface, it's pretty nice that a lot of the core uh, cleaning modes are right there. And if you want to change vacuum levels, well, go into the more and you can see the suction and water styles. Kind of interesting that they just chose to go with small, auto, and big. I would probably show some different naming, but maybe they're trying. Okay, so same thing with water styles. You have three different settings. And with material life, interesting name. Uh, you can see the extractor bar, the side brush, and filter life. Kind of glad they included a secondary filter. And they did include some additional side brushes as well. Okay, with the timer, you can uh, have it repeat once. You can choose what day of the week you want. Also, you can set notifications and you can do different cleaning. Uh, very cool. You do have the option to do home, which is a nice feature. Okay, so let's go and jump back into here. And uh, you do have the option to seek robot. You can tell it to do a spot clean, random, and auto. And as you swipe over, you have edge as well. So that's just the main interface. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap this video. I'll give you my final thoughts. Now, just as a pointer, uh, this world of vacuum is not for everyone. If you're the type of person that wants the latest and greatest, or if you're looking for the light of navigation that offers smart mapping, aka be able to tell the world of vacuum to clean a certain area or room, or be able to tell the world of vacuum to keep out a certain area by the app, well, this world of vacuum is not for you. This world of vacuum is designed for someone who wants an easy to use world of vacuum, maybe someone who lives in a dormitory or a one bedroom apartment or a more open floor plan because this world of vacuum does not have those additional sensors. Okay, so as in terms of navigation, I have no gripes about it. I think for what it is, it actually navigates quite well. Also, with the power levels, it's on par with most of these world of vacuums in its price class, around 3000 pascals, so it did a pretty good job. It's not the best and it's not the worst. Okay, so speaking of mopping performance, well, it's on par with a lot of these hybrid mopping robots. I know some of them offer counter spinning mopping pads or vibration, but overall, just from my personal experience, I think a lot of these robot vacuums are designed for the light mopping tasks. Well, if you're interested in this robot vacuum, I will have a link down below. I believe it's like 25% off, so uh, you can get a pretty good discount. And if you have any questions about this robot vacuum or any other models, feel free to shoot a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. You guys have a great rest of the day, and thank you so much for seeing me out this robot. You guys are awesome. Adios.